In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to customize the data read in from a table in a PDF file using the options provided by the PDF source component. In addition, we'll show how to use the conditional split transformation to filter out unwanted rows for further customization. This component comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. Here's the PDF file that I'm going to be using for this demonstration as the source, and it has a lot of financial data in it. It's actually um, five pages of financial data. I'm going to close this now so that I'll be able to configure the package and it won't say that the uh, file isn't used by another application, but this is an exact copy of that also, which I will not be using except to so we can keep something open and look at it while we configure our package. Um, so I'll get back to that in a moment. This is the Excel file that I'm going to be writing the data into that we read out of that table. So I'll close this, and this is where that Excel file lives in this folder. So here we are in Visual Studio, and I'll start by dragging the data flow task onto the canvas. Double click, now we're on the data flow canvas. And we'll scroll down and find the PDF source component and drag that onto the canvas. I'm going to make it a little bigger. We're going to be using this to uh, get financial data from table in PDF file. Actually, I'm going to make this smaller now so we can have our PDF file open here. And I'm going to double click on the component to open the editor. I need to set up a connection manager, and it is an existing file. And I'll browse to find the file that we just closed and click OK. And here you can see if I had a password that was required to open up the PDF file, I could enter it there. And then I'm going to just show you some things before I start um, showing you what these different options can do for us. So we'll go to the columns first. And here you can see, so if you look at the PDF file, the column headers take up two lines. And so I'm going to put the full name in the output column here of what that each header name is supposed to be. So this will be account number. Column two has um, nothing in the first header line. So um, I'm gonna, that's why it just ends up saying column two there. And then uh, this will be beginning balance. This will be current period activity. And this will be current balance. Oops. So now they'll um, have the full correct name in the Excel file. And now we're going to preview that uh, PDF file. And it gives us a warning. So it pays attention to how many cells are in uh, each row of the table. And so it's warning us that it detected some rows with four cells, whereas there are five header columns. And it recommends checking the skip incomplete rows property. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So first I will show you that we only have data pulling in for the preview from the first page. And so we'd like to get the data from all five pages. So I'll go back to the general tab and here I'll check the box for merge consecutive tables with same number of columns. So now the component will pull the data from all five pages. I also want to point out the parameter called source table, which allows you to specify which table you want to access. In this case, I want to access the first table in the PDF file, but you have the option of accessing other tables if your PDF file contains multiple tables. 
you know, if it's not clear, you just try incrementing, you just start incrementing this and look at what it's pulling in the preview to see if it's getting the data from the correct table. So I know this is the first table in here, so I'm just going to leave that set to zero, which indicates first table. And if we go look at the preview now, we're going to get that same warning again about four rows with four cells. We'll just close that. And now if we scroll down, you can see it has a lot more rows in here. And I think I want to get rid of this grand total line down here. And I also want to get rid of the row that says page four. And we have page three, two, and one in here. So let's work on that now. So we'll go back to the general tab. And here we have the skip incomplete data row. Um, and it just has it set to bottom rows. I'm going to change that to all. So if we shouldn't get that warning anymore about rows that have four cells in them. And then to get rid of that uh, grand total line, I'm going to say skip last n rows. I'm going to set that to one. So it'll just get rid of, get rid of that last line at the end of the file. It's not removing the last line on each page or anything like that. So now if we go to preview, we're not getting that warning message anymore. And we can see what do we want to still have to deal with the page numbers showing up. And we got rid of that grand total line. And um, the other things we got rid of are those subheaders, the assets, liabilities, and equity doesn't show up in here anymore. So I think that's all that we can do with the uh, options here. Although I do want to mention that to find the table that you want to read the data from, you can use the index like I already described, or you can use a regular expression, or you can use uh, both of them. So I'm going to close this editor now, and I'm going to go ahead and finish configuring, well, finish the uh, destination. So that'll be the Excel destination plus component, which is another Cozy Rock component. Um, and I'm going to use this to um, write financial data into Excel file. All right, so I'll connect the source to the destination. I'll double click to open the editor and I need to set up a new connection manager to point at that Excel file that I want to write the data into. Oops. Excel dest files and then I call it trial balance. And we click OK and then I select the worksheet which is just sheet one. And we'll click on columns to get everything mapped. Stay tuned to see how I complete the configuration of the package and execute it. If you are integrating applications with SQL Server, you know it can be quite a hassle. With the Cozy Rock SSIS Plus REST framework, you can easily connect any web service. Create XML defined configuration file. Process complex services with an embedded JavaScript engine. For additional power, you can use any .NET class in your code. All data is protected using the standard SSIS framework. Check the growing list of ready-to-use REST configurations. Start using the Cozy Rock SSIS Plus Suite now. It's free for download and development in Visual Studio. Now I'm going to remove the arrow between the source and the destination because I need to insert a conditional split transformation in between so we can filter out the, um, the other lines that we don't want in our data. So I'll connect the blue arrow from the source to this conditional split. And we'll start by getting rid of the rows that have uh, the word number 
in the first column. And then I'll get rid of the header lines that are in pages two through five. We only need one header. And then I'll use the logical or operator because we also want to get rid of anything that has uh, the word total in that first column. I'll get rid of our total lines. Then we'll use the logical or again. And we want to get rid of the page number lines. So that would have a null in the first column. So we'll do that and then put account number, which is the first column for the expression here. All right, and so that output name is case one, and that's going to be all the lines that we don't want. So we'll just leave those going somewhere into the ether. And then when we choose the output from the transformation, we choose conditional split default output. So we'll get everything except what got filtered out with that case one. And I'll save the package and open up Solution Explorer, right mouse click on the package and select Execute Package. And it was successful and we got 214 rows directed to our Excel file. And we'll go open that Excel file and take a look at it. So there you can see we have one row that has all the column names in it and all the column names are correct. They're the full name for the column. And then we'll scroll down and, uh, okay, I don't see any page numbers anymore. And I don't see the total lines. And I don't see the extra header lines. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.